Now, if the net present value rule is the golden rule of project decision making, then the internal rate of return rule is the silver rule. And as I mentioned in the lecture, the reason this is the case is because there are two distinct scenarios in which the internal rate of return rule can give the wrong answer. The first scenario is when we have what are called non-normal cash flows. And the second scenario is when we have what are called mutually exclusive projects. Again, as we talked about in the lecture. An example of non-normal cash flows is below. Notice that in the year zero for this project, we have our initial cost, as normally we might see in a, in a regular project. Then we have two years of positive cash flows. And finally, we finish and our final cash flow is another cost, is another negative cash flow. This is what we mean by non-normal. Non-normal cash flows mean the cash flow signs change more than once. And the signs here refer to the positive and negative signs in front of the cash flows. So a normal set of cash flows would have a negative cash flow followed by a series of positive cash flows like the problems that we've been working so far. A normal set of cash flows could also look like this, where we have a series of positive cash flows and then a negative cash flow to finish things off. Again, these are normal specifically because there is only one change in cash flow signs. We change from negative to positive cash flows, and here we change from positive to negative. So normal specifically means we have one change. These are your typical projects that we've been playing with, but these are not uncommon types of projects. Types of projects where we might see positive cash flows followed by a negative cash flow could be something like a concert where all the tickets are bought up front and then the cost of putting on the concert and paying the employees and the venue and all that is incurred at the end. We're still hoping for the same outcome, that is we have more positive cash flows than negative cost. Non-normal cash flows would require, like what we see here, say a negative cost, a series of positive cash flows, and then another negative cost. Notice here we have two sign changes, from negative to positive and from positive to negative. This kind of cash flow stream is not that uncommon either. For instance, we might see this type of cash flows when we're looking at, say, a mining project, where we have an initial cost to dig the mine, and then years of positive cash flows as we produce the, the ore, whatever we are, whatever we're digging for in the mine, and then typically, at least in developed countries, we have to rectify the environmental situation. And so we have a negative cost here for cleanup. But it could also just be any series of randomly positive or negative cash flows. And of course, even though we might see this in practice, remember that the cash flows for a project we are analyzing are projected cash flows. So these cash flows are what we expect to happen, not what will actually happen. So it would be very rare to expect that the cash flows would change signs this many times for a project. Not impossible, but unlikely. Now, IRR fails in the case of non-negative cash flows, and, and I want to show you why. So here we have our non-normal cash flows. We have the cash flow signs change more than once. We have this case. And let's solve for net present value and solve for internal rate of return on this project. So we'll just use the calculator here. And again, because we're so we, we can do these together, this will be quite quick. We go into the cash flow environment. We need to clear our previous work, so we press second and clear. The initial cash flow is the initial cost of the project, and here that's $90,000, and it's a cost, so it's a negative cash flow. It's a cash outflow. We set that value with the enter button. We move on with the down arrow to the first cash flow, and the first cash flow is $132,000. We set that value with the enter button. We leave the frequency of the first cash flow at its default value because this cash flow doesn't repeat, so we just move on. The second cash flow is 100,000. So we enter 100,000, we leave it as a positive, that's a cash inflow. We set that value with the enter button, we move on. 
We leave the frequency at 1, this cash flow doesn't repeat, and we move on. The third cash flow is 150,000, but in this case we have another cost. So our final cash flow is negative 150,000, and then again, once we've entered in all the cash flows, we can stop. We want to solve for the net present value of this project. So we get MPV. The required return for projects of this risk level is 15%, so 15% is our discount rate. So that's our I. We move on with the down arrow, and we compute to solve for net present value. And we get $1,769.54.06. Based on our MPV rule, this is a net present value that's greater than zero, so we accept the project. Given that net present value and internal rate of return almost always agree, we should expect that when we solve for internal rate of return, we will also accept the project, meaning we should solve and find an internal rate of return that's greater than the discount rate. If we just go over and press internal rate of return, we can solve for the internal rate of return. All the cash flows are stored in the cash flow environment. We haven't changed anything here. So we can press IR and compute, and we'll get some thinking here. But what we notice is when we solve for this, we get an internal rate of return of 10.1102%. In other words, based on the internal rate of return rule, right, the IRR here is less than the required return. And so we reject based on an internal rate of return rule. And this doesn't make any sense because the internal rate of return should agree with the MPV. But in the case of non-normal cash flows specifically like this, we end up with a net present value profile as we see in the slides, that is concave, meaning we have a net present value profile where that crosses the x-axis more than once. So there are two discount rates that will set the net present value equal to zero. This is a quadratic function. And so the, the, the internal rate of return rule in cases like this changes slightly. And because there are two internal rates of return, there's one here and one here. And that means that the, the value given to you by the calculator is just this first internal rate of return. And it doesn't give you this second internal rate of return, which is 40 something percent. You can see it in the slides. And so when we have this case, we can't use the basic internal rate of return rule. However, the net present value rule is still correct.